Okay, um, I think we're on video number 11 here. We are continuing, um, I'm going to wrap this up, the Excel values real quick. Um, we've pretty much finalized, uh, we, we've, we've built the fuel graph, uh, graph. again this is just a um, one that I built um, to show a few key concepts I wanted to uh, get across, um, just some things to watch for. And here in Excel, <coughs> um, I pretty much left off at the, the pump sustain. So we're pretty much done with all this. Um, these values right here are actually in several different places. You'll notice that these are also here in the fuel, um, just the, the basic fuel. They're also um, in the next section that I'm going to cover. Let's see, uh, tabs, uh, do feedback. Okay. Um, they're also here. So I'm just going to use them here because I'm going to use all this stuff too. What I did was I went ahead and put in values um, for, for some of you guys that are you know just uh, new into this. This table right here, um, now, now what we're doing is we're getting into O2 feedback. O2 feedback is, uh, you know, as, as we've discussed to this point, has been turned off. Not on, it shows on here, but um, make sure it's been turned off to this point. Um, and what this is, are these are the target values that you're trying to achieve given RPM and engine load. Okay, so this is, you know, idle down here. Here's cruising values. Okay, um, and then here's all of your boosted stuff up here. Okay, now, uh, and I've already set most of these up, well, some of them up over here. Um, Pretty much what you need to know, you can plug these values in, and this is what you're targeting. Now, in my very first video, you guys remember me saying we'll go back into the setup wizard and do some of this stuff. For whatever O2-1 AFR you've you've chosen, and you've you've done the wizard for it, so this is the wide band that you're running. Go up here to feedback O2 control, and select the same one. Okay. Um, click uh, apply and hit close. Now, a lot of these are already in there because I, I did this before I started the video, but what that does is it sets these um, these integral gains, the, the proportional gains, gives you an O2 feedback versus time. Um, so for for however cold or warm um, your, your motor is, whatever coolant temperature you have, it delays the amount of time until this table becomes active on top of your fuel map okay so and this is you know your base setup so what it's doing is uh, this it's, it's taking your O2-1 reading okay and it's plotting it versus a target here which is this graph and then it's going to give you an O2-1 feedback value this is how much it's either adding or subtracting on top of your base fuel map to get you to your desired target values, these guys, okay? So, um, obviously in a perfect world, you know, uh, this O2 and target arrow would be zero if, if you never had to turn any of this on and your, your fuel map and everything was perfect, you know, from day to day to day, but obviously it never is. So that's what all this is for. This is that last little icing on the cake thing that you do to keep um, your, your fuel economy really nice, keep um, you know uh, combustion temps down, keep everything very efficient, um, you know not not waste fuel, things of that nature. Um, what I recommend doing, don't worry about the uh, the the rit, um, I'm sorry, um, the the min and the max RPM. What I like to do. And again, this is just going to be personal preference. I cap the max load at about five pounds. Now, what that does is um, it's basically it restricts all of this. Okay, it restricts this whole map to only operate within those constraints of your actual fuel map. So basically, everything in vacuum, slightly into boost. And why do I do that? I do that because if for whatever reason your wideband was ever wrong, okay, um, and it was reading incorrectly, and you were still out ripping on it, um, these values up here, okay, it's kind of like a closed loop, open loop, and if, if you're familiar with 
OEM type um, tuning systems in NECUs, there's something called closed loop and open loop where basically your O2 sensors are not doing any kind of fuel calculation. And to this point, if you guys have watched my videos and you've done everything um, to this point as I've instructed, you should have a really good map without O2 feedback. It should start, run, idle, and drive great, boost great, make good power with no O2 feedback control at, at all. And now we're going back in here and turning it on, and we're confining it to basically everything below 5 pounds. Okay? So this is where it's active. And in this whole section, it's targeting these values okay um, now again that's just personal preference if you guys want it to you know always be in control and always doing it you can set it to 35 pounds and now it, no matter what pressure you're at it's always uh, taking it into consideration um, as far as limits go if you've done everything right everything's mechanically sound you should never need a value of more than 15 percent either way okay and that's a you know a, a, a semi large value should you ever need 15 percent no but it might be nice to have when you get you know uh, super hot intake temps or something in that uh, that other graph just isn't enough where you get one of those really cold days um, or just for whatever reason you know um, you, you might want that little extra buffer. If you go beyond these values, you probably need to go back and revisit your main fuel map. Um, realistically speaking, it's probably, it shouldn't uh, add or subtract more than maybe 10%. Either way, that's that's pretty common. Um, uh, min load, max load, uh, off above. Uh, okay, these values here, this is what we we're going to talk about. Um, and then I'll shut this video down. Um, this is basically fuel cutoff. Okay, that's what this stands for. D cell fuel cut. Uh, just just take it for uh, D cell fuel cut. Um, it will basically give you a status of on or off. Okay, inactive or active. Um, and you're telling it basically when to be in fuel cutoff. It's it's basically like a fuel economy mode. Okay, where it just cuts your injector, and you're just not using fuel when you do not need it. So, you know, you're in fifth gear, and you're at like 15% throttle, whatever, just cruising nice and easy, and you're coming up on somebody that's going slower, so you let off the throttle, right? You don't completely, um, okay, let, let's just say you completely let off the throttle. You don't need to brake. So, if you're, if, if, if you are above 2,000 RPM, above 2.3%, above 40 percent or I'm sorry 40 degrees Celsius and your manifold pressure falls below negative 9 it basically turns off your injectors to save fuel okay and that's what D cell fuel cutoff is and what you guys will notice sometimes this value right here is the most important out of all f all, all of these four and why is that well Sometimes, given a particular setup, now this might be negative 7 on one car and it might be negative 11 on another. This is completely dependent on your particular motor, your cams, um, you know, how strong your vacuum source is, all these different things and just how the sensor is reading could, could change this. Um, you, if, if you ever see, the, the best way to go about this, if you see this D-cell fuel cutoff ever become active or on, whenever your foot is not completely off the throttle, okay, then what you need to do is lower this value, okay, so say to like that. But then you also want it to be um, high enough to where whenever you do let off the throttle and your motor goes full vacuum, that it does cut off the injector. And it'll, you'll, you'll watch your wideband up here, it'll just go full lean. And that's it's 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 just another one of those little icing on the cake things. Whenever you're doing all of these, um, you know, fuel values, and you're doing all this Excel stuff, um, it's actually a really good idea to just turn this what would basically be off, so you could set it to like, you know, negative fourteen seven. You're never you're, you're probably not ever going to see that. It's never going to turn on. It has to read below that value, and it can't because your break point is there. So it's basically never going to turn on. So whenever you're tuning everything else, it's not a bad idea to
to set this here so it never becomes active and you'll miss it. You guys that watch my video, you know, whenever we were tuning idle, I was like, it's one of those things that'll come back and bite you. Whenever you're doing all this, don't forget to take a look back at your fuel map and watch these values right here because as you go lower vacuum or more vacuum or whatever, you might run into an area that's really lean or really rich and it's actually messing with your your uh, your your idle tables. Same thing here. Whenever you might actually run into this, this D cell fuel cutoff, and everything else makes sense. You might want to play with this value so it won't come on unless it's um, um, only when you need it to. And it's just a value that you have to play with personally um, to, to get it where it needs to be. That's pretty much it for this video. Um, let's see, update rate. Update rate is the only other thing that you guys might want to play with. This is um, how basically how fast it responds. You guys can play with this value. Um, it's kind of the same thing over here on idle. You guys, again, you guys that watch my other videos, um, it's kind of the same thing as idle feedback rate. Your value goes too high, you might start getting crazy huge um, variances one way or another, and it's actually worse than having a lower value. So it's just one of those things that you have to play with until it becomes very responsive, but not too responsive. Okay, that's pretty much it for this. The next video, we'll start getting into uh, how to increase your boost, how to boost by gear, and uh, all, all that kind of stuff. Thanks for watching, guys. Stay tuned.